This is a bunch of random household items and garbage. And with that, we're going to create another grim, epic spider forest goblin scene. The two minis I finished for my goblin army are both some of my favorite minis I've ever painted. But I keep pushing the rest of the army aside because I'm worried that I'm not gonna live up to my expectations. But today we're taking the bulls by its horns, creating an amazing diorama base for one more spider. If you really want to make an impact with your miniature, have a chance to win a best in show award, having a great paint job is often not nearly enough. You need to tell a story, and the best way of doing that is by creating an epic base. So we got these two spiders that I still have left to build bases for, and obviously paint as well. So I'm just gonna bring out all the different uh, basing materials that I've collected throughout the years. It's a lot of garbage. And then I'm gonna show you how I make these award-winning bases. Let's do it. And I am a terrible concept artist. But with all of the stuff that I had found in the storage room and out in the nature, I created a sketch with a goblin shaman riding on a throne floating in the air with a spider coming behind him, kind of following his every step. And with the sketch done, no matter how terrible it is, I have something to work from. It's nice to have it on a sketch so I kind of know where I want to go. Not a very detailed sketch, but it's enough for me at least to kind of visualize where I kind of want it to be. Okay, let's start with the goblin. It's probably the best looking goblin I've seen in years. The guys over at MV Creative are running a Kickstarter called Green Skull Castle. And I'm not sponsored, but I wrote and asked the guys if they could send me a copy of the shaman because I just loved the design. I've got the link to their Kickstarter down in the video description. And the throne we're going to use is from the Slan Resin Kit. And the stuff that I'm using to create this base is old branches and roots that I got left from after cleaning my garden, broken plastic ruins that a friend gave to me, cork bark that you can find at any fish store, cork coasters that you can get at IKEA for just a few dollars, leftover pine bark from the garden, and some leftover steel wire that's been in the garage for the better part of 15 years, polar twist that you use to wax your car, and leftovers from old plastic plants. And that's all you need to get started. The first step of building the base is dry fitting the main parts. I need to make sure that the posing of the spider works with where I place my ruins and the big branch. When that is done, I pin it to the base and start adding the secondary elements. The branch was a bit too big to be practical for gaming, so I decided to cut off a bit in the back. At a later step, I also cut off a bit on the front just to make sure that they tied together better. And with that done, I started building different rocks and stalagmites that I could build up high enough for my back legs of the spider to get some stability. So this is actually one of few things that I am not gonna use garbage for because uh, I kind of want the rocks that I now have cork coasters on to look a bit more sculpted or more like rocks and less like cork. So I'm gonna use some milliput and just sculpt around those. It's probably gonna be super simple because I've never done it before. But I've seen people do it on Instagram, so that's gonna be fun. If you don't want to buy milliput and spend like 10 bucks on milliput for the base. You can use just the uh, coconut fiber between different layers of the coasters and uh, you're probably good to go, but I kind of want to take it the extra step on this one because I'm excited about it. So let's do that. Okay, and with all of the cork coaster parts in place, we got some really nice layers going on. So just grab some milliput, start kneading it together and start sculpting. If you can't access milliput, you can probably use some air drying clay like DAS for this as well. But that will also make the base a lot heavier. I just use some silicone tools to push the clay around to make it kind of look like a soft stalagmite. 
I did not have to put in a lot of effort to make it look decent and with that I could leave it for the rest of the day and start painting tomorrow. I'm then using some steel wires to create some magic roots that will carry the throne through the jungle. I'll drill some holes in the base and in the throne, as well as in the branch on the base. This should be enough to keep the throne floating. So I spent pretty much the entire evening last night thinking of how I would do the bottom of the creek. My first idea was to use sand, but then I would pretty much only be able to do dry brushing on it. And I kind of want to paint some maybe rocks into the bottom of the creek and make it look a bit more flowy with paint. But then I remember that I have the Geek Gaming modeling compound. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of that and just put it as sort of the texture in the bottom of the base. You could probably use any like DOS, air, drying clay or anything like from dollar store for that. But I've got this, so I'm going to use that. And before we start painting, we're gonna fill out some gaps and add some more textures using coconut fiber, some more ruins and a few plastic plants bits from just old plastic plants that have been in the garbage bin. I start off by just priming the miniature and then using a white ink to create a zenithal highlight. I'm gonna save a lot of time by using contrast paints through an airbrush to create the base tone for the miniature. And for the blue-green turquoise colors I'm using Achillean green and Plague Bearer flesh mixed about 50-50. And even with using all of my speed painting techniques, this miniature took about six to eight hours because it's just so over the signs with horns upon horns and small details that needs to be painted. Okay, so it's a new day and today I think I'm about like maybe 60, 70% done with the spider. Uh, but I think I'm gonna jump on the base first this morning because then I can make like the water effects and things because if I don't do that It's not gonna harden in time uh, for tomorrow when we do like the finishing shots of the video. So I'm gonna start with that pour some water and There's someone at the door. Let's go see who it is Oh, Look who it is. I guess that means that you have to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'm using a lot of colors on this base, making all of the rocks green because I want it to feel like a dank jungle. And then in the center of the base, we're creating a small river or a creek. My initial idea was to just create like a water flow painting in the bottom, but I then figured that I wanted to have tiny rocks at the bottom. So I hand painted all of the tiny rocks at the bottom of the creek. It's now time to tie everything together. I love using pigments and a lot of grass tufts, especially gamers grass. I have like a hundred of those. So let's get started. Okay, so I have finished painting the base, at least. I've done the pigmenting. I've 
and it grass tufts. But now I want to do the water effect. The cork kind of sticks out of the base, so it's going to be really, really difficult to create something really nice with two part epoxy resin because I can't really make it flush. All of the parts would have been needed to be within the base frame, so to say. But I came up with this idea if I do like the edges first with UV resin, just to make sure that I get sort of like a, a sharp edge where the resin can't leak out. I think that should be enough. So I'm going to sort of create this uh, fence of resin on the edges. And then from there I can sort of pour regular two component resin. So I think uh, we're going to try that first with the UV resin here and we'll take it from there because yeah, fingers crossed. Let's hope it works. I feel like it, it kind of worked, so I think this is going to be good enough. Uh, it's going to need some cleanup, but I'm going to do the other two parts where I feel like, uh, yeah, the rest might leak and then we can do the big pour. So. <laughs> and then we're using a two-part epoxy clear resin, mixing in a drop of turquoise ink to really get it to tie together with a jungly feel. We then make a super high pour and pray to Gork and Mork that none of this is gonna leak out and that we're not gonna get any bubbles. And if there's any of these tools that you're interested in picking out or trying out for yourself, I've got almost all of that listed on my website squidmar.com. And if you follow any of the links, Amazon and the other affiliates pitches a bit of money back to this channel that makes sure that I can run this channel and make videos every week. So I'm super thankful to all of those of you who are picking up your stuff from my links. And with the resin pour done, it's time to bring out the spider webbing. This is one of those effects that's just gonna tie everything together so much more. Using the Green Stuff World Spider Serum through the airbrush, I'm spraying it everywhere. And if there's something that helps tell the story, this is it. There's just two more steps to do. The first one is to paint the goblin. We're using the same techniques as with the spider to start with contrast paint through the airbrush, this time airbrushing quite carefully, and then going in with a regular brush and regular acrylics to highlight everything from the skin to all of the different skulls and feathers on the mini. I'm using colors that complement the rest of the base and the spider but I also want to put some focus on the goblin. And this, this is Polar Twist. This is the stuff you use for waxing your car. Just grab some of this, mix it with PVA glue and some inks or acrylic colors. Spin it around the steel wire that we painted to look like a root. Some around the trees and around the ruins. And you have a jungle liana that perfectly looks in scale and it's just the tip of the iceberg that just blends everything together. So the miniature is done. I'm super happy about it. I think it looks amazing. But before we do the grand reveal, massive shout out to all of my Patreon. It's thanks to you guys that my salary is paid and that we can take the sponsor's money in whatever video we do and reinvest that into the channel. Special thanks to all of the top patrons. You guys are beasts. And with that said, let's do a final grand reveal. <laughs> 